Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the Bearded Pearl podcast. I'm your host, Caleb, and I'm coming to you from my home in Kohler, Wisconsin. I live here with my partner, Justin, and our two cats, Buster and Daffodil. This podcast is a podcast about the fiber arts and a lot of the other fun things that go along with that, the sense of community, the knowledge, the yarn. <laughs> um, and I'm going to share with you some of my cooking, baking, uh, my urban gardening, and my, my journey to be a little bit more self-sufficient with that. So without further ado, I would like to start off with my introduction and how this podcast came to be. And it's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. And now that we have been at home for a few weeks in quarantine, um, social distancing, I think it's a really great opportunity for us to make some time for things that we've been putting off or neglecting for a while. And quite frankly, we're running out of home improvement projects to do. <laughs> so this is something else that I really wanted to, to give a try at. and no time like the present, right? So I had asked on Instagram a few days ago about kind of a Q&A and any questions that people had for me that I could answer both on Instagram and the podcast. So before I begin, I want to say that you can find me and the podcast on Instagram. Uh, my personal Instagram is close to Amish. Or the podcast, Instagram, Ravelry, and YouTube is The Bearded Pearl. And they're all the same there. Um, so how did I get started knitting? Um, it's a great question. I actually started crocheting when I was about six. My grandma uh, was an avid crocheter and she was a really crafty lady as well. And we were vacationing in Florida with her. Um, she was a snowbird, so every winter they would go down and rent a condo in either Alabama or Florida. And so we were vacationing with them, and she had been crocheting scarves and afghans for all of the grandkids. And I just really took an interest to it and wanted to learn. So the few days that we were there, she showed me how. And then um, a couple months later, when she came back for the summer, we kind of sat down a little bit and played around with it and like a typical six or seven year old um, lost interest really fast <laughs> and then didn't pick it back up again uh, until a few years later and started crocheting pretty frequently so that was probably my primary craft for a while and I, I really enjoyed it I loved crocheting blankets and, and a lot of stuffed animals and just kind of anything you could think of and found that after a few years my my wrist it started to bother me a little bit um, and just I think it was the way I was crocheting and, and how I held my hook and probably a host of other things but uh, I really enjoy crocheting and wanted to do more I'm, I'm always looking for that next greatest thing or the next best thing to try and, and dabble in um, I definitely dabble in a lot of different projects and crafts and so that's where knitting came along. I had been seen at a coffee shop that I frequented in a neighboring town. The There was a group and they would meet I think either Wednesdays or Thursdays once a week and a few times that I was there they were knitting and I really wanted to try that and got really interested and so every once in a while I would just watch them and sit and I thought you know it doesn't look too hard I bet I could do this so I had two sharpened pencils and some red heart yarn from my grandma's attic and I just sat and played with it until I figured it out and lo and behold uh, a few weeks and a few months later I was able to knit a scarf and now was it a great scarf? No. <laughs> um, definitely had a lot of holes in it and some crazy tension in the beginning and I bound off totally wrong because I ended up with a few loops on one end and a few loops on the other and I'm not sure how that worked out but um, it was a project and I then kind of decided that it was something that I really wanted to dive further into and 
I went to Walmart and bought a book and some needles and again didn't know anything about the craft beyond just dabbling with the the pencils that I had and so I picked up a book about sock knitting and I got the double points and the yarn and knew nothing about gauge or tension or the appropriate yarn to use so I had got size 8 needles and worsened weight yarn and knit a sock any of you who are experienced sock knitters would probably know where the story is going it turned out to be a gigantic stocking because I followed a pattern for fingering weight yarn with worsted weight yarn in size 8 needles so um, I only made one of them and kind of got a little discouraged with that but for my second project to make a sock that actually looked pretty decent and was able to be used as a stocking I thought hey I'm gonna run with it so I did and I had heard through uh, kind of a home ec class that I we were taking in in school that the teacher actually knew how to knit and crochet and so she kind of guided me along the path of um, different yarn stores and, and kind of what you should be looking for and that's kind of how I fell in love with it from there and I slowly added more and more um, different types of projects to my, my skills set from then on so I've been knitting for about 13 years now and have loved it ever since and have of course added many other projects to the plate so now uh, I really like to knit, spin, weave, um, do a little bit of crocheting every once in a while uh, and so so that's kind of how I got started and where I'm at now um, another great question I had was what is my favorite thing to knit or a go-to knit when I'm not I'm not sure what I want to work on and I would have to say that is probably socks or a hat. I don't often wear a lot of hats myself, but think they're a really nice, uh, relatively quick project that I can gift. So um, I love to make a bunch of hats and gift them to people. And socks are always fun. And going back to the, the second project I ever made, um, I just fell in love with the construction and I think they're a really great go-to project, especially uh, a vanilla sock that you can kind of take with you or just have a little mindless knitting um, when you're watching a movie or just need to unwind for the day. Uh, I also, fun fact, worked at two yarn stores and shortly after I started knitting and getting kind of deeper involved in the fiber arts community, I worked at one local yarn shop uh, in the neighboring town. and. I worked there for a few years, absolutely loved it, gained a lot of knowledge, and really uh, helped hone that sense of community and belonging in the fiber arts, um, and then ended up going to graduate and went off to college, and while I was moved um, away from the, the current local yarn shop, um, I, I just I needed that, that sense of fiber arts community and that, that belonging. So. I had found another local yarn shop um, to me where I was living in Milwaukee at the time. And after a few years, I started to work there as well and really love working for yarn shops and just the people you meet and getting to help um, with patterns and, and helping people create things. I think that's what I enjoy most about the fiber arts in general is just the creativity and the sense of community and, and love that we all share, which is fantastic. And I see it getting stronger and stronger every day. So um, that's one thing that also kind of drew me into podcasting is that I, I want to be deeper connected and really engage further within the community. Um, on that note, I want to talk about another great question that someone had, which was, what is my favorite needle brand? And I would have to say, hands down, Chowgu. Both their interchangeable and their double points. I've got sets of both in the stainless steel and the bamboos. Uh, I love the finishes on the needles. 
in, in the bamboo and the stainless. Um, I think it's got a really nice coating on the bamboo that helps deter any sort of splintering or cracking. Um, and it's got a nice smooth glide without being too slippery or too grabby like a lot of wooden needles can be. And similarly with the stainless steel, the needle itself is actually hollow. Um, so I think that that helps keep it lightweight. The finish on it is a brushed stainless, so it's slick like a metal needle, but not too slippery. Um, I feel like sometimes you can find with a like a Susan Bates or um, a Knit Picks or even an Addy Turbo, the needles can be just a little too slick for what I enjoy working on. Um, and I primarily knit with a lot of natural fiber based yarns, wools, mohair, um, silks. And, and so I feel like those tend to be a little bit slicker on metal, um, which is why I love the, the Chow Goos and their, their brushed finish. Um, I own the interchangeable sets of both the stainless steel and the bamboo. And what's great about the Chow Goos is the cables are amazing. Um, I think that they're the premium cable out there from the needles that I have experienced. They don't kink, they don't bend or, or get funny, um, they don't fray, they have almost zero memory. You saw how tightly coiled up that was and perfect ready to use. They stay locked in the needle tips perfectly um, without having to do any sort of excess tensioning. Um, they do come with a little key, which I have um, in, my, in my bag here and they come with a ton of different tips. I have a half set here, I also have a whole set um, that I use, and then what's great too is you can add as many tips or um, cords that you need to your, your set. Um, I tend to have a lot of projects on the needles at one time, so I order a bunch of extra tips that I keep on hand. And so that's my favorite needle brand, and I thought along the lines of that, um, a great tip, or what I find to have helpful in my notions pouch, would be something that um, some newer knitters might find helpful, and I thought I would share that. So um, I just have a smaller notions pouch, and I usually keep a couple of these items in most of my knitting bags, but this is kind of my go-to traveling pouch that I have. Um, it is actually made out of an old sailboat sail, um, and came from a shop in Maine. So. Um, so let's get started. I often have some sort of lotion or hand cream in, in my knitting bags. I feel that sometimes when you're knitting with a lot of natural fibers, uh, your hands can dry out a little bit, or vice versa, if your hands are a little bit dry and you're knitting with natural fibers, it can get a little grabby or funny. So every once in a while, I just give a little moisturization there. Um, really great for your hands and also helps the yarn too. Um, when you have a lanolin based product like the tuft ones. Um, I also keep a roll of highlighter tape in my notions pouch. This is fantastic. Um, it's removable and very translucent and you can just take off a piece and what I usually do to add it to a project page is I create a little tab at the end of it and that way I can easily remove it and then I add it to whatever um, pattern I'm using and you can take it and peel it off and restick it and you can see your pattern right through it so that's really great. So that's my, my helpful notion number two. Um, I always have a bunch of darning needles in different shapes, sizes, and colors. Um, sometimes it's really hard to darn a dark project with a dark needle or graph the, ki the toe um, with Kitchener stitch of a sock or weave in the end. So I have uh, usually a light, medium, and dark one, uh, and some of them are straight and some of them have a bent tip, just as a mixed set. I also have a row counter, which I think is really helpful when you're keeping track of things like um, st stitches on a sleeve that you need to keep track of rows, uh, so you don't have one sleeve that's too long and one that's too short. Um, that's just a little helpful gadget to have. I do always have a crochet hook. This helps for any sort of provisional cast-ons. Um, I like to do the crocheted provisional cast-on method and also for picking up stitches that might get dropped or having to fix your work. And then always, always have to have a tape measure on hand. Um, I do replace these every so often. 
uh, just because they can get a little funny and stretched out, um, but they're pretty inexpensive, so I usually keep one of these actually in just about every knitting bag I own, and half the time I can't find it. And then lastly, I always have a handy dandy, very sharp scissors. Um, I, I think there's nothing better than a sharp tip scissors to help cut through your yarn um, when you need to get through a project. And, and a great one like this uh, also helps when you're sneaking a project that you can pick up each individual stitch that you need to and not catch the others and you can slice through it evenly and cleanly. And I actually have a little scissor protector there from Sandy by the Light Side. She gifted it to me and it was one of the most helpful <laughs> uh, and useful little gadgets I have because this, this set of scissors is really sharp and I do keep it in a separate little bag um, just so it doesn't poke through anything else uh, that I have. One other thing too that I, I keep on hand in a lot of my knitting bags are stitch markers and I tend to use the light bulb shaped ones uh, which look like that and they're really easy to not only get on your needles but also to stick into your work um, and kind of use as a progress keeper or a row counter. Um, so for instance on a sleeve I might put one of these after every decrease or maybe every 10 rows just again to help make sure that the sleeves are the same. Um, so that is what I have in my notions pouch um, and I hope that you find that helpful and um, again most of most of this stuff is pretty inexpensive to kind of gather and build up if you're beginning knitting. Another thing that someone asked on Instagram was, am I going to be sharing about cooking and baking on the podcast? And absolutely. And along the lines of that, I wanted to share one of my favorite resources, and that's America's Test Kitchen. So I use this book almost like a cooking and baking Bible, and I actually subscribe to their online service. and. They have an app where you just go in and you can type whatever sort of ingredients you have on hand or recipes, and I think it's super helpful. Um, all of their recipes are phenomenal. I have not had one that has turned out poorly. Uh, a few of them might be a little bit more time consuming, <laughs> or there, there might be a few more steps than you would think that you would need, uh, but all of, the, all of the end results are fantastic. So I really love to use them as a, a cooking and baking resource and am a huge fan. So with, with that, uh, I would like to get into knitting, uh, and I have a couple of fun other projects to, to share. So let's start with the finished objects. My first finished object uh, is a hat, and it is the Winter Walk Hat by Tracy Miller of The Grocery Girls. I knit mine out of Malabrigo Rios in the Candombe color. And I made the worsted weight version, which is knit on a size 6 and 7 needle. And I added the super fun real fur pom-pom to it. Um, I am unashamed to be using real fur pom-poms. I do, however, advocate for looking uh, online to get recycled furs. So a lot of the pom-poms that I buy are made from old coats. Um, or stoles and things like that so it's not promoting the the new killing of animals but here is the, the pattern that you can find on Ravelry and it is again the winter walk hat by Tracy Miller and it's got a modification for a DK weight and a worsted weight version which is amazing I'm finding uh, a lot more often now that I am buying a lot of DK yarns in, instead of worsted weight, so it's really great to have, have both versions available and not have to fiddle with the math to get the right needle gauge. The next hat I have is Twist Miss um, by Astras, Aspas Trico, and that was, I believe, released a few years ago as part of their, their holiday um, patterns. And so I knit mine holding one strand of mohair with a doubled fingering weight yarn. And I used the Flying Kettle Glider base for the fingering weight, and I held that double. 
and then I held it with a mohair. So I thought it would be fun to show you too how this is the finished project after holding something with mohair and this is what the two yarns looked like separately. So I used a, a kid silk haze as the mohair. Um, and that's the finished object of that. Really fun. Um, I love knitting with mohair and holding it together with projects. Um, it doesn't bother me at all and I think it's super soft and especially with things like hats or mittens, uh, I think it's a great addition to help with the, the windproof uh, nature of the fabric and it really helps keep it a little bit warmer. So that is the Aspas Trico twist Twistmas hat. The next project I have is the Colorwork Cowl by the Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And I adored this pattern. Um, it was super fun. Oh, you can see I made a little mistake there. But hey, it's knitting, right? Um, it wouldn't be a mistake in a, a project I made if it wasn't handmade. Um, the other side. <laughs> so here is um, a super simple pattern for a great colorwork cowl. Highly recommend it. The inside is just as beautiful as the outside. Um, I used Malabrigo Rios in the Cumparista color and that's kind of this purplish red and the sand bank as the tan. Really really fun one. Um, I knit this as a test knit and I, I love it. Um, it's a really great pattern to to use and cover up with um, with a fun cowl. I think I think what's nice about some cowls is that they can be a little bit closer to the neck um, and you can still see the pattern really well. Um, some cowls that are a little bit bigger or drapier, they often um, get a little bit covered up when the, when the pattern itself uh, lays lays how it should. Um, so I really enjoy this and Definitely will probably make another one or two of these and add them to my gift pile this year. Um, so that is the Colorwork Cowl by the Crazy Sock Lady. The next project I have to show is another one that I really, really enjoyed and it flew off the needles. Um, I got this done in about a week and it's knit on really big needles, so I think that helps. <laughs> uh, but it is the Cellula Shawl by Banny Re Designs, and I knit mine out of Cozy DK, which is a plucky knitter base, in the wheat and amber colors. So here is the finished project, um, and you can see, so each section you add another little lace repeat, um, and it's just a few rows, really simple, um, really great shawl pattern. It up I think in a worsted DK even probably a chunky but so there's that I love it really fun and there's the pattern the next finished project I have is yet another hat <laughs> can you tell I went through a phase where I didn't exactly know what to work on um, this is the Dexter hat by pearls and pepper designs I knit mine out a, of Woolstock Worsted, um, which is a Blue Sky Fibers yarn, and I used all of all of the um, the lighter color. I had to get two skeins, um, so I, I used all of the first skein and then just a little bit of the second. Um, but it comes in, I believe, 25 gram skeins, um, and they're really great, especially for color work projects like this. Um, it might come in 50 gram skeins. If um, I'd have to check on that, but really, really good yarn. Um, it blooms beautifully when it's blocked and super fun for color work. So this is the Dexter hat by Pearls and Pepper. And that is this pattern right here. It also has a cowl. Um, I haven't knit the cowl. I don't often knit a lot of um, matching sets of things. I, I like to kind of mix it up and, and keep it a little bit fresh and so I don't I don't tend to knit a lot of the similar matching projects with the same yarns just because I, I have a really short attention span so I get bored quickly. Um, the next project I want to show is one that has been on my needles for just about forever and a day. Um, it is the Flax Sweater by Tin Can Knits 
and I knit mine out of Neighborhood Fiber Company in their Studio Worsted Base out of the Sheridan Circle colorway. And I make a few modifications to mine. I tend to add um, a little bit more stitches in the sleeve because I just I like I like a little bit roomier sleeve. Um, and then I also changed the increases here a little bit to, to match the gauge. My row gauge was a little bit short, so I had to knit uh, about an inch and a half extra to get to the, the yoke depth that I needed to. And just in time for spring. <laughs> so I won't get much wear out of this uh, for a little while, but I love it. And I have made two flax sweaters now. Love them both. And we'll probably make a few more. Um, the yarn was a joy to knit with and it washed up beautifully and it's really soft and um, definitely one of my recommended go-to patterns. Uh, they have so many different size ranges uh, that it's really great to be able to accommodate um, such a, a large array of sizes whether it be newborn or adult. And another fun project I finished recently is a crochet project and I actually found out today that the person I knit it for who or crocheted it for um, my sister and brother-in-law she might actually be going into labor today so congratulations to, to Tyler and Amber and welcoming little baby June but it is a crocheted Hobbs I love this guy um, the, the details on his face were supposed to be felt, but due to the quarantine, um, I wasn't really able to get out and, and find a lot of supplies other than what I had in hand, um, so I crocheted the stripes. Um, it, was, it was pretty simple to kind of fudge that a little bit. Um, this guy took a lot longer than I thought he was going to. Um, now, part of that is because I waited to the 11th hour obviously since I finished him yesterday <laughs> and may or may not have had nine months to work on him you know um, but he's finished and ready to go in the mail so uh, he will be enjoyed by baby June um, and he's really big uh, he's probably about 16 inches tall and from from tip to feet he's probably about 18 inches um, this pattern is by Suki and Mia Handcraft and I crocheted it out of a really awesome yarn that I highly recommend for baby garments um, or washable projects um, that you, you might be gifting. Um, it's an acrylic yarn and it is Uptown DK. It's a universal yarn and I got it at my local yarn shop for what five dollars a ball um, and I used up most of the orange and the black um, and I have a bunch of the white and the red left over. Moving on to another project, I have also been weaving a lot lately. Uh, I got a Ashford um, tabletop loom for Christmas this past year, and my first couple of projects um, are now off the loom, and I'm actually working on a set of towels right now, so hopefully I'll have that finished in the next couple of weeks that I can share with you. Um, but this is a scarf that I finished about 10 inches wide and this I made out of Malabrigo Rios in the Vulcan color uh, and I use that for my warp and weft so that's a fun um, it's a really nice long one good for um, doubling up especially in this Wisconsin winters that we have here um, really really happy with how this turned out I, I'm, I'm really excited and I, and I love the, the texture that the yarn itself gave to the project um, this is what it looked like in the skein so it's kind of fun to see um, you never know really quite what you're gonna get um, when you're weaving and I did add a fringe because what's a scarf without fringe uh, but yeah so that is the Malabrigo Rios in the Vulcan colorway and that is my woven scarf I have another scarf that I wove, um, and this was actually using up a lot of worsted and DK weight leftovers. Um, so it was a really, really great stash busting project, um, and in some of my favorite colors, in, in some purples and, 
and some, some neutrals that I had. Not quite a plaid pattern. Um, I did it totally at random. And so I did my warp and my weft in the same colors, uh, again, in, in at totally random intervals. Um, so you can see here, this is my warp um, and what that looked like. So I have a few yarns that I used up leftovers of in here. The, the tan is a Madeline Tosh DK. Um, the, the grays and the purples are a lot of Malabrigo leftovers. And then the lighter gray section here is a It was a, Lord have mercy, it was a really great MCN base from, <laughs> no I can't remember, ah, Sun Valley Fibers, <laughs> good gracious, um, but yeah, so I did it at total random, it was a really great stash processing project, and I love it, um, and think that I will probably make a few more like these um, as gifts to give away and I, I did a twisted fringe at the end of this and really enjoyed that that was kind of fun um, and I just I just love the way that it lays differently and the, and the colors play differently depending on how you wear it and it's super soft and really really fun um, so that is that project one more finished object that I have to share is actually a test knit that Justin and I worked on together and it was for Matt Akers. Um, his pattern actually went live today and it is the Wonderland socks and I love these. Um, Justin has been doing quite a bit of test knitting uh, socks lately and I may or may not have been stealing them because I love handmade socks. Um, and like I said, these are the Wonderland socks, so they've got a really great texture pattern running down the front center and um, a pretty simple kind of twisted cable at the top and the rib that also kind of travels down the front center edge as well. Um, the yarn, the main color that we used was Brew City yarn. Um, I can't remember what exactly it was called. I want to say it was... So, uh, it had to do with Gryffindor, um, Harry Potter color. I think Felix or Felicis Leo. I'll make sure that it's in the show notes. Um, but I'm obsessed with Harry Potter and naturally I'm a Gryffindor. So I, I had to have some Harry Potter socks. And the contrast color is a Manos del Uruguay sock yarn. Um, and I think it's just a really rich combo that looks really nice together. And that's on some fun shoopy sock blockers but I really enjoyed the way they turned out and the pattern is fantastic and you can find Matt Akers on Ravelry as Makers Knitting so a lot of fun stuff there that is it for finished objects um, now I want to show off a couple of works in progress that I have um, to start it's not even remotely started yet other than a swatch because I do firmly believe in test knitting uh, a swatch for any sort of fitted garment that you want to make um, specifically sweaters so I used to be anti-swatch hated swatching always thought that my gauge was um, on gauge and for the mo most of the part it tends to be pretty accurate but you never really know quite how the yarn itself is going to play in, an, in a knitted garment or a crocheted garment. So that's why it's always really helpful to just work on a swatch and just put the time into it. Um, there's nothing worse than having knit a sweater and at the end of it and it's blocked and washed and beautiful, it doesn't fit. Um, I've had that happen a few times and it is totally heartbreaking. So I knit a swatch for the Sorel sweater by Wool and Pine um, and it's a fun mohair sweater um, and you're supposed to hold a, a fingering and a mohair together I believe um, I am using Miss Babs 
yummy two ply in the migration color. So it's about fun grays and blues and a and, and pretty neutral speckle. Um, and I'm also using their brand new mohair base, which is called Moon Glow, and I'm using the color Franklin. So this is what these two look like together, separately. And then here's my swatch. I did have to knit a few swatches to get the, the fabric to match up to the gauge of the pattern um, and one that I liked. And this is what that looks like. So again, you can see how two yarns that are, are similar in, in color families, um, they've got a lot of the same blues running through as the mohair, um, but they just look totally different knit up together, and I just think that's super fun. So there's my swatch. So I'll be working on that, and hopefully casting that on soon. One other thing that I find helpful with swatching too is I don't do the yarn over trick to remember which needle size I used. So sometimes people will um, add the number of yarn overs for the the needle size. So for instance, I used a size six needle for this swatch. They'll add six yarn overs. Um, I leave a long tail in my swatch and actually add knots for the needle size. So I can go and um, I usually do it in my cast on end of my swatch. That way as I'm ripping it out in case I need to use my swatch or need to re-knit my swatch and use this yarn, um, I can rip it out and then just get to that knotted point and, and not waste it or have to cut that off. Um, so that will be my for my Sorrel sweater. I also, I can't forget this watch, um, for my throw over sweater by Dree Rene, Dree Rene Knits, um, Andrea Maori, and this is out of Jill Draper yarn in the Empire base, um, and I believe it's a 100% Rambouillet, uh, naturally dyed. It's a, it's a really nice, kind of earthy, toothy feeling wool. Um, it's more on the rustic side, but still super soft, great next to skin. And I have a lot of really fun hand spun, hand spun that I, I enjoy spinning, but I'm one of those people that just think it's too precious to knit with. And so I'm trying to get out of that habit. And this is my hand spun cube. And Justin and I are both hand spinners. So this is, this is a mixture of both of our yarns. But um, there's a couple of them that I really love together. And I have this project in my Fat Squirrel Fibers bag. Um, it's just a cute little kind of fun springy spring bag. Um, so I am also amazed by the size of this bag because it holds <laughs> my Jill Draper yarn baby perfectly. A lot of hand spun. Um, I have since lost what these tags were um, as far as dyers and, and colors, but I, I just love that combo together. I thought it would be kind of a fun sort of fade in, in the pullover. And so here is where I am at. I am just, I've just finished the yoke portion of the sweater and I've done my back shaping. So I'm ready to divide for my sleeves. And now one thing that I find for a lot of uh, either unisex or primarily women's or female designed patterns um, for, the, for the female body shape is that uh, they're easily adaptable to be unisex or, or to be men's patterns, but again, one thing that I like to do is add a little bit of extra room in the arms. I feel like sometimes they can be a little bit snug or tight, um, so easily adjustable to just add a couple of extra stitches in the backwards of cast on or just a couple of extra increases. But here is my finished yoke. Um, I'm really loving the way that it's coming together. Um, my tension is a little bit funny here and I, I think that'll block out okay. Part of the problem is that the hand spun was different weights of yarn because I threw all caution to the wind and who cares. Um, the only one that was the, the correct weight of yarn that I needed for this pattern was the darker blues that I had spun up. And so I did have to double the green here, which ended up being a little bit thicker. And then also the, the letter kind of sea foamy blue uh, but I think it's gonna block out just fine um, really love the way it's turning out so far and can't wait to to work on that um, I just love incorporating some hand spun in a really special project like that and that, like I said that pattern is the throwover pullover it's a play on the 
uh, Throwback Cardian by Andrea Maury. And there's the pattern. I am also working on, this is a long time whip, uh, it is the Color Affection Shawl by Andrea, nope, that was the thrower. It is the Color Affection Shawl by Vera Falamaki. And I am knitting mine out of the Pearl Soho Posy Base, which I didn't actually realize was not the right weight of yarn. Um, until I got to this point in the pattern. So what you'll notice is that I really don't often read patterns thoroughly or fully and just kind of run with it. And that's one thing that I think is really fun about knitting is that you can just go at it, have fun, and if it doesn't work out, it's just yarn. It'll all be okay. Uh, but so I started here in the gray section and you can tell how long I've been working on this whip. <laughs> because I have Christmas progress markers <laughs> on there. Um, so this is the Color Affection Shawl by Vera Valimaki, and I am using the colors. Let me find the tags. I thought I was all organized and ready to go, and I guess I'm not. That's okay. Um, so the colors I'm using, it is a uh, kind of a sport weight MCN, or is it just a merino cashmere? No, it's not MCN. God, you think I didn't know what I was doing. Um, Posy in the Weathervane Gray, Black Cherry, and Morning Dove colorways. So I am a little concerned about running out towards the end, but at this point I think it'll be just fine and I can end the shawl a little bit early so I've started with the gray section and have now incorporated the morning dove which is the lighter kind of taupe color and I'm now adding black cherry which is kind of a difficult one to see so I'll grab my yarn um, it's a beautiful mauvey burgundy purple um, one, of, one of my favorite colors as you can see I've got some yarn there in that color there in that color there <laughs> um, I tend to wear a lot of jewel tones and gray um, so I think that this will be a great addition to my wardrobe um, really really nice project um, the pattern is written really well and that is housed in my sandy by the lake side bag um, I love this bag and fun story I have a couple of Sandy's bags and these fun little leather tassels at the end um, my cat Buster loves to rip off so I have to be really careful about letting the project bag sit out without being put up in a way or he rips them off and I really don't like that <laughs> um, so that is it for works in progress I am going to move on to some stash enhancement um, I am going to just say that I'm a habitual shopper uh, when it comes to yarn and I have zero regrets. <laughs> um, the, the, the problem is I've got lots of time now with quarantine and everyone's having these really awesome shop updates which is not great for my bank account but let's start sharing the yarn. So the first one that I want to share is a really fun sock kit that I got from To The Max Yarn Co. Um, this is a sock set in a superwash merino nylon, a really squishy base in a really fun color. Um, you can see it's got a great pop of that, that neon green, uh, which is throughout the yarn there. Um, so I'll make a fun pair of socks with that. But it is a trippy sock set, um, again, by To The Max Yarn Co. Canadian Dyer um, is actually one of the children of the Grocery Girls podcast, um, Jody's uh, child has started dyeing some yarn. So they make really great yarn. Um, love all of their colors and the colors with colorways that they're coming out with. Uh, highly recommend checking them out. The next one that I want to share is um, the Les Garçons group had an update a while ago, and for those of you. Um, who are familiar with designs by Dells and Max the Knitter. They have combined to create a really fun shop um, of both of their wonderful talents and 
designs and yarn dyeing. Uh, so I picked up some really, really pretty green in a DK weight. It is Dell's Twist DK in the Chris's Pines green color. Um, Dell's has a ton of fun colorway names, and I think that this is probably going to be a cowl with this other yarn that I have, which is a Nerd Girl Yarns DK. Is it, well, yeah, it's a DK in the Mother of Dragons colorway. So, um, Nerd Girl Yarns does a lot of fun fandom colors, and so I think that would be a great combo with that deep, rich green there. Then I also <laughs> bought some sock sets from Kirby Werby Yarns, and I have recently discovered Cherie and her daughter Landry, and absolutely adore them. They're so fun. Um, Cherie is an excellent dyer and really, really fun. Um, so she has started dyeing up a lot of Schitt's Creek colorways, and for those of you who have se seen Schitt's Creek, one of my all-time favorite shows. Those of you who haven't seen it, highly recommend to watch during quarantine while you've got the time. Um, it is a super funny show. Um, so this is the first one that I got, and it is called Old Farm Witches with Nom Noms for Us David as the mini. And if you remember that episode, um, Alexis called a, a group of Mennonite and Amish women Old Farm Witches, and it was really funny. Um, so I love that sock set. The Fat Squirrel recently knit um, a hat out of that yarn, I believe, and also did this fun little kerchief. Or maybe it was just a kerchief. I think it was just a kerchief. Uh, but I fell in love with the colorway and had to have it. Um, and the other sock set that I got was Love That Journey For Me with a little bit of Alexis as the mini. Um, another super fun, really saturated colorways. I, I love that in a sock yarn, especially a self-striping. I think if you're going to do the stripes, make them bold, make them fun. Um, so I love that and can't wait to use those in some socks. The third one that I got was a Hells to the Yes colorway. Um, it's a tonal gray background with a rainbow stripe. So it goes from red to, to pink um, and everything in between. And then every other stripe is a gradient gray. So it goes from dark to light in the other, uh, contrast stripes. So that's a super fun one. Justin loves to knit with rainbow sock yarn. So this one will probably be for him um, if I decide to share it. Uh, or maybe I'll, I'll make him knit the socks and then steal them. <laughs> Uh, which is which is my mo, but um, love Kirby Werby yarns, super soft, great colors, and and check out Cherie on on Instagram and her shop as Kirby Werby yarns. The next one that I want to talk about is uh, a dyer who is a good friend of mine. Absolutely adore her. She posts a lot of fun stories on Instagram and 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 all of her pets and. Has, a, has fun neighborhood cats roaming around, and that is Murray and Co. Wool Goods. And Sarah dyes up some phenomenal yarns. Um, she has a lot of great Harry Potter colorways and sock sets as well. Um, so highly recommend checking out her shop. Uh, she recently had an update a few weeks ago, and I bought a sweater quantity of this Tweety DK in the Smoke colorway, and it is an 8515 Superwash Merino Donegal Tweed, and it's 231 yards, and love the, the light gray color. Um, you can see the rest of the yarn over here. Um, I'll be using that to knit a Gramps cardigan, and I will be making mine all out of one color. The pattern itself calls for two colors. Um, the second color is the border, but I'm just going to do it all out of that, that gray tweed as a, a fun, cozy cardigan. Um, I find that now I, I, I am totally into the sweater kick and just want to knit every sweater I can find, um, which is not a bad thing, uh, especially in the Me Made May. Uh, the next shop that I totally 
lost my marbles over is Chelsea Yarns. I have recently discovered Chelsea Yarns and um, absolutely love her. Uh, she she is fantastic. I, I love her podcast. She has a Chelsea Pearls podcast, um, owns a shop out of Red Bank, New Jersey, and, and has an online store as well. And so I bought a bunch of yarn um, in her DK base. Um, this is 100% superwash merino, 225 yards. Um, one of the softest DKs I have felt in a long time. So really love the yarns. The colors are great um, and happy to support another indie dyer. So this is the charcoal color. And I got a few of these. I think I might combine them to make a super simple sweater or a a raglan of some sort, nothing too complicated, just to show off the, the colors. Um, I might make a cozy classic raglan. Um, so there's there's the, the charcoal DK. I also got a few skeins of the DK in Sand Dune. Um, it's a really fun, kind of slightly tonal, taupey yarn. Um, so I'm going to add that, hopefully, to this. I'm going to hold one of each so I can hold them up. Then I got this gorgeous gold. Uh, it's got a little blip of a burgundy color there that I hope you can see. Um, it's called Starflower. So I'm gonna combine those. And then another gorgeous color that is relatively new to our shop is Tin Star, and it's kind of a mix of all of the colors. So I think that might be a fun addition as well. So I got a few skins of that to add to it. So I might end up combining these in some fashion to do um, a, a striped sweater or might even do a big cozy shawl. I'm not sure yet, but absolutely love them together. Love the yarns. So there are those. Also from Chelsea Pearls, uh, because I couldn't help myself, I got even more great yarn. And a few of them I ordered some mohairs to match. So this is one of my all-time favorite colors, this this kind of moody burgundy red color. Uh, this is called Cranberry Cream Pie. So I got two skeins of the DK and a skein of her mohair, which is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk, and 459 yards. So I'm not sure what I'll do with that, but just had to have that combo. Then I also got a kit to make um, one of the shawl patterns that she has and in the colorway Blue Lagoon. So here is the mohair and here is the cobblestone base which is a 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. It's got 438 yards and it's got these fun little slubby texture bits um, that I think will stand out really fun in a shawl pattern. So uh, this is the, the same color on the cobblestone base and the mohair. Um, the mohair is a little bit lighter, but I think that'll just be a really fun addition um, to the shawl pattern. I also got a skein of DK and a skein of mohair to make a hat in the Sunday Times colorway. I might make a, another Twistmas hat. Um, that pattern calls for a DK and a, a mohair, and I had held two strands of the fingering weight together um, to get the, the right gauge. And so I think I might make this for my sister for Christmas. Um, it's a really fun, super neutral base um, with just a couple of dark gray and black speckles. Um, I think that'll pair really well together to make that Twistmas hat. The last bit of yarn that I got from Chelsea Pearls is in the Mini Mobius colorway, um, which is a beautiful, very springy, blue color with a couple of awesome yellow and, and, and purple speckles um, that you can see there. So that's the skein of DK and in the mohair in the mini Mobius cowl or a colorway. <laughs> um, and I might make a cowl as well out of that. Um, so I love that. Then my last little bit that I went a little crazy over um, and I'm actually going to be working on a super fun project with Martha of Tuft Woolens to hopefully bring something really fun to the, the Bearded Pearl. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. But I got a bunch of sock soap. Um, Martha owns Tuft Woolens. And so I got Texas Sunshine, uh, 
um, which is a really fun citrus scent. This is an exclusive scent from Mustache Yarn. I got Lemon Tart. I got the Russian Flower, which is kind of like a lavender, very sweet, bright, um, almost reminds me of a uh, kind of like a baby, baby powder, kind of talc, very, very light floral um, scent and the 5th and 57th, which is one of my favorites. Um, it's a really deep kind of earthy, leathery, vanilla, tobacco scent. Um, and then I got some of the, the Ninja's Hand Balm that I was talking about. Um, I also got some of that in the Texas Sunshine scent. Really awesome, bright, citrusy. Um, so I got some of the Vanilla Almond, the 5th and 57th that I was talking about. The Sage and Blackberry scent honeycomb because I absolutely adore anything bee related and love bees and wish I had some. Um, we have a, a local um, couple that comes to the farmers markets here in in the city and I call them my bee lady and um, it's a I primarily see the the woman that owns the the, the business. Um, they have tons of bees all over the place uh, throughout the state and in a couple of other states and they, they kind of swap with um, other people that raise bees and kind of trade off different honeys so every once in a while we'll be able to get a fun like citrus blossom one or um, but I but I, I love Lorraine and John and the business that they're in and think we should absolutely support our our apiaries and um, those who are raising honeybees because they are so important to our pollination um, cycles in, in the food that we grow and in the plants and our ecosystems and um, not only the the honeybees but also all of your native pollinators as well so we have planted along the side of our house a massive spring pollinator garden so it's loaded with thousands of tulips and hyacinth and daffodils and muscari and a lot of other fun early spring bloomers that that help with the po native pollinators and and the honeybees as well. I've seen a few of them on there, um, so not to get on my honeybee tangent, but I absolutely love supporting the the, the honeybees. Um, at lemon tart as my other scent and fresh air for something fun. Um, so th those are my tuft woolens order. Um, I know I went a little crazy, but that's me. It's what I do. Um, so th this is kind of the format that I would like to continue with the podcast. Um, I hope to show lots of fun, awesome things and take you along on the journey and also incorporate, like I said, some more cooking, baking, gardening. Um, we are actually turning our backyard into a cottage garden. The village that we live in is based off of the garden communities of Europe and we, we have a beautiful little brick home. And I think it's going to be a really fun summer project to help turn that backyard into a, an English cottage garden and really bring that charm back to the, the home. Um, a lot of the, our neighbors in the community are retired and have a lot of time spent in the summer in their gardens and they look beautiful and I, I enjoy talking with them and learning from them and getting some of their plant divisions. Um, and, and just kind of helping spread that, that joy through gardening with them. So looking forward to developing that, that cottage garden in the backyard through this year and a few years to come. I know cottage gardens are something that take many years to establish, so looking forward to that. Um, I think that's about it for, for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was probably a lot of me rambling, and I was super nervous to begin this, and... I, I'm, I'm just really thankful for all of you who reached out and gave me so much love and support over the years with my Etsy shop and and my Instagram and just encouraging me to create a podcast. I, I appreciate it and it's it's more than I could have ever asked for. So I'm really excited to, to finally be making this, this leap in this journey with all of you. And some exciting news too is I will be reopening my Etsy shop under the Bearded Pearl name. It was formerly A Simpler Home, and I will have lots of awesome knitting and fiber art related things in there, so some weaving, some hand embroidery, um, I, you'll find tons of great knitting bags. 
I am working on a fun collaboration with Martha of Tuft Woolens, so look forward to that. Um, and that Etsy shop should hopefully be opening again sometime in June. Um, I've ordered a lot of my supplies and due to some shipping uh, setbacks and some delays with COVID-19, um, a lot of that stuff is just taking a little bit longer to get a, a hold of and, and that's okay. So we're just going to open it a little bit later. Um, and I hope that you are all staying healthy and being well during this time and finding little bits of joy and things that bring you happiness, whether it be crafting or, or reading or quite frankly, binge watching a TV show. Um, I know that whatever it takes to stay sane and, and stay well and be healthy, that's, that's what you gotta do. Uh, one great show that we've been watching lately is Hollywood. So we started that a few days ago and it's, it's a show on Netflix, um, kind of set in the, the post World War II Hollywood era and phenomenal cast, great actors and actresses in there and am, am really great grateful to see to see a lot of the different representation of diverse communities and diverse populations in, in that show especially I think that that's something that we need to see a little bit more of and they did a great job helping bring that representation in the show but overall really great cast really great storyline um, I'm curious to see if they'll be doing more episodes um, after this first season is up um, I thought originally that it was going to be a mini series, but we'll see what they do with that. So um, with that, I want to say thank you, and I hope you all have a wonderful week, and until next time, find some joy in your week, and get crafting.